Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to another daily scuttlebutt with Ivy's family factotum. I am Anson. It is cold. So, um, this is actually the first time that we've ever slept or been in the RV over the winter time. And uh, I, I think it's becoming a, a very quick learning curve of what to do, what not to do. And yeah I'm still waking up so rubbing the sleep out of my eyes <laughs> so drinking my coffee um, but yeah we it boy it went down to like 20 what I think Gladys said is 24 this morning when she looked at her phone <coughs> uh, we do need to get um, some thermostats like I'd, I'd like to be able to get the electronic uh, thermostat that gives you the temperature inside and outside like a little little weather bug thing and uh, but yeah we did not have heat last night because of the propane so our tank regulator the one that and we talked about this on the live last night if you're able to catch it um, but our tank regulator has busted i guess you know it, it, it was you, you can smell gas like there was a leak somewhere in the rv and you can smell it like outside and whenever i plugged in one of the the 20 pound bottles it went through an entire bottle in about an hour um yeah so uh, this, this was, you know, not running the heat, not not using it for cooking or, or nothing. That That's how I found out, you know, that was, <laughs> mom was going to cook something. And around like lunchtime, and there was no gas. And I was like, what? It's like, I just put a brand new bottle on there. Why, why is there no gas? I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> and this was like a few days ago. So what I did... was disconnect that regulator and I have another one on order because it's, it's the, the automatic you know that has the two hoses that comes off of it so it automatically switches um, between the two bottles and uh, that way it's, it's always under pressure right that way you can uh, change out a bottle and, and such but the the one thing that I didn't really care for it was the indicator that's on there, yes, it, it, it's either red or green. Um, that will show that it has pressure as long as it's the arrow is pointing to the tank that you're looking to see if it has pressure or not. But it doesn't have a gauge on the bottle or, or any of the hoses. So you can't really tell how much pressure. Because during the winter time, you really don't want your bottles to go under that 30%. You know, so you have the green zone, the yellow zone, and then the red zone where it needs to be refilled. And during winter, uh, I know, because I've lived in an RV before, right, as as a teenager. And, and dealing with propane and, and, and such, so I already know that, you know, you don't want that propane to go below that 30% uh, because the, the bottles will start to freeze up. You know, because you're trying to utilize the, it, it's not able to off gas or the, the vapor coming from the, because liquid propane, it it's not going to freeze, right? It, it has to be at like severe, what, like negative 40 something Fahrenheit. So it, it has to be very cold uh, for propane to actually freeze, right? So it's the, the whole freezing of, a propane regulator or or the bottles <coughs> that's that's basically your your appliances are using more vapor than it's producing um, is what's happening so uh, it will freeze up right and it doesn't um, and the heaters won't work so uh, obviously whenever it's cold outside you know that will you know, speed up the facilitation of freezing, I guess. 
or the the vapor. No, normally, if you're able to keep, you know, your bottles covered and and such, you're gonna be fine. But um, I'm using on so I ended up connecting my hundred pound bottle, which normally the hundred pound bottles, you know, don't have an issue with the the vapor or using up you know too, too much of your vapor um no, normally anything above the 20 so like a 40 pound bottle and above <coughs> um you know th those are going to be a lot better you know with your vapor so i ended up connecting the 100 pound bottle well i connected that when it still had uh, a leak and it, and it did leak some of that out. Plus, this bottle that I'm using now, um, it was also used for burning all of that wood. So that's also utilizing up a lot of the gas that was there. So it's at the point now that I I do need to go fill it because it, it is probably at that 30%. Um, but there is enough in there. So I last night, I had it switched. I switched over to a full 20 pound bottle and it just, it couldn't keep up with the demand. So, you know, and I have, I have the pressure, you know, set to where it needs to be, um, uh, going through it just as, yeah, the, the heater couldn't keep up last night. Uh, mom does have an electric heater, which glad I went and grabbed that this morning and uh, but at, at that point you know was, everyone is already sleeping and, and cold which you know everyone's got some, some decent blankets um, I, I think the only one that was in a, a super thin blanket more of like a summertime blanket was me <laughs> uh, which I was I was fine up until the point that that Gladys woke me up in the middle of the night because she was cold, which she was underneath a winter. She uses winter blankets in the summertime. So, um, uh, that she was cold. So I got up, you know, and did a little bit of, uh, investigating and, and such. I was like, well, this is what happened. And, uh, <clears throat> I didn't, I wasn't able to fix it. Right. Cause I can't go refill propane tanks, uh, and such. Which right now, I, I do have it back on to the, the big bottle. Um, I was able to, to do that, but it's still, it, you, you can hear the heater. Like, it'll click on, then it'll click off. It'll click on, then it'll click off. <laughs> uh, so, for for being a an Arctic rated RV, yeah, it's, it, no, it's not. So... Uh, gonna have to look into getting some um, 15 mil. I want to get the 15 mil plastic. Uh, that that was recommended to me by my uncle. That's what he uses on his fifth wheel. Uh, getting some of the 15 mil. It's just like an agricultural plastic, or you can even use it for like um, co the concrete foundations, like your your layer of plastic that you put down uh, before doing concrete and stuff is. But it's a thick, right? It's a 15 mil thick. So uh, I'll, I'll look and see if I can't get some of that uh, just to be able to, to close off, you know, because you want to stop the airflow from going underneath your RV. That That's the biggest thing. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like an insulated blanket because I, I know that they have the RV skirts and stuff that you buy, but I don't got two grand in my pocket to go buy uh, the materials needed for an RV skirt. So, um, and that's, that's the cheapest one that I found. And that's a, a, a full blown, you know, it's a like five layer or six layer insulated, uh, panel that, that you're putting up and all those get, you know, in like almost like a hard install, um, where it's, it's there for, a long time you know uh, type thing and uh but th they it, it did look like it was easy to be removed like you put them in with 
um, snaps, I believe. So, but I didn't want to install that onto the side of the RV because we already know that we are not keeping this RV. You know, this this is going to be a a short lived, I guess. No, yeah, I mean, we've had it for a couple of years. So, um, but at some point, we are going to to get rid of this one and actually downsize. <laughs> At some point, so uh, something just a little more, you know, economical, uh, easier to pull. Uh, but once we have living space, you know, here on the property, you know, i.e., cabins, you know, a place that that we can stay, you know, to where once mom and dad's cabin is done, then we can stay in the shed. And then the girls can stay in the smaller RV, right? <coughs> but still have, you know, bathrooms, kitchenettes, all, all that stuff that is needed. You know, plus, obviously, mom and dad's cabin would have a full bath. It has a full setup, a full kitchen setup, all those things. So, um, yeah, uh, that's about what we got going on. So, uh trying to stay warm it is warming up uh, quite a bit in here uh, with the the heaters uh, going i got both the propane heater going and the big electric heater going um, but it is a learning curve we're still learning <laughs> uh, but on the plus note our water didn't freeze knock on wood so uh, i guess it is something right with, with that so all right you guys well, definitely appreciate you. Make sure you're staying warm out there. Check in on your friends and family. Make sure that they are also staying warm. And, uh, yeah, last but not least, remember to always thank a veteran at every chance you get. Not only on Veterans Day. Stay warm. See you on the next one. Bye, y'all.